All right, today we'll talk about a topic that I'm super passionate about just because I spent so much time doing it. It's video editing with AI, okay? We're gonna be looking at a workflow where I turn different media like speeches or meeting recordings into short form clips that you can then automatically distribute to social media. So this is really a guide on how to mostly automate the editing side of content production for social media channels that want short form video. Full disclaimer, this video is sponsored by the tool that we're looking at today, but it's a video I wanted to create in a while anyway. And when they reached out, I was just like, yes, this is the opportunity to dive deep and show you how we do it. All right, so without further ado, what are we doing here? We're taking different recordings and we're turning them into short form videos. Now, as you know, short form videos have been all the rage across the past few years, and they're a fantastic way to get your foot in the door. Matter of fact, for most people, I think it's recommended to start with shorts and then graduate to long form videos over time if you're looking to build a social media presence. And what I think is especially cool about what we're doing today is that you can build the entire social media strategy on the back of this tool. And all you need to do is you need to commit to one content format that you'll be doing otherwise. Let me elaborate. So building a personal brand or creating a social media presence can be quite tricky and it's a big time investment, right? For example, for me, it's really all I do. It. I research topics, I prepare videos, record them, we edit them, we post them, package them. There's so much work involved, but there's a different way. And the different way is actually taking a tool like Munch and repurposing long form video to shorts and that being your strategy. Now you do need to get the long form video from somewhere. So before we talk into the step-by-step, -step, let's talk a little more strategy on how you wanna be approaching this. Where are you gonna be getting your long form content from? There's a few great options here. The obvious ones are podcasts or lectures. If you're doing podcasts or lectures already, then you can just take those and with a tool like this, automatically repurpose them to shorts and you have a social media presence right away. Now, if you're not doing those, you could record them, right? You probably know a topic pretty well and you can just sit down, create a PowerPoint presentation and just hold a 20 minute lecture around it. And then you could repurpose that recording. But what works like a charm is just taking recordings of different meetings you have and turning them into shorts. Now given 95% of that might not be usable, but at least for myself, when I run meetings and I direct people, I often say things that might be valuable to people outside of the meeting too. That's exactly the moments that you can capture here and just auto publish those moments to social media. And doing all this really couldn't be any simpler. I mean, look at this. This is the interface. This is what you get when you log in with your Google account. And then all you gotta do is click plus and you pick the social platform you wanna go to. Let's say it's YouTube Shorts. I mean, in practice, you're probably going to be reposting across Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts. You can even go to LinkedIn here. But again, this works quite well. The big question is, what are you going to be inputting? What kind of content are you going to be uploading? That's the variable that's going to make all the difference here. So when I just hit next here, I get a few options. I could upload a YouTube video of mine, or I could go with a raw recording. Now, here's my recommendation. If you have an edited video that has some memes and sound effects and maybe titles in it, that doesn't work very well. You want these podcast style recordings where it's either you talking or a conversation and there's maybe just camera switching, but not many visual effects. A tool like this has a hard time deciphering what is on screen and what should be shown. So what I did here is I took my latest upload, which is edited, but there's not that many effects because it's a speech at the Google offices in Madrid. And if you have a look at it, it's mostly me speaking with a little bit of screen recording in between. Now I could just paste that in here or I could upload it separately. Ideally, you would want to upload it separately because then you preserve the most amount of quality. When I link a YouTube video, the compression that YouTube applies to it will already be baked into the footage. So for the best outputs, you do want to upload files. But just for the sake of this example, I'm going to go with the link and then you can pick from various popular subtitle styles. Let's just take this one, this is always changeable later on. And then I say, this is a lecture and I find this really helpful. I mean, yeah, obviously there's other similar tools like this, but this one has a few extra features, which I really enjoy, like giving it more context about what type of video you're putting in. And also the editor does things that some other tools don't do, which I think is really important. Now I think the two best settings are either the default one or maybe 59 seconds because YouTube Shorts doesn't take clips longer than 59 seconds. And then you would just say munch it. But really, before we get into all the details here, let me re-emphasize how important it is that you pick good source material. You can upload up to 240 minutes, which is four hours and 20 languages. So anything goes. It can even be from archive. Maybe you spoke somewhere a few years back. You can upload it into here and create social content from it. Maybe you have some meeting recordings sitting on your Google Drive. You can just test out if the results are any good for you. I gotta say, I was really surprised by how many things we can repurpose. I'll give you a great example. So for example, on this one, where I was showing people how to build conversational GPTs, aka take information about a person and turning them into a GPT you can talk to. There's a lot in this event, and with the help of AI, we already do our best to summarize that, right? We have these summaries, these timestamps, 
But because I covered a lot, also the recording is super long. Look at that, one hour and five minutes. And if I were to take this and give it to my editors to chop up into short clips, well, it would take them about two to three hours to go through all the material and pick the parts which are relevant. Then you have to do subtitling, titling, you need to readjust the aspect ratio so it fits, and you need to make sure it's under a minute. Well, all of that happens automatically. It really does eliminate the editing work with this. All I would do is just upload it as a new project and I'm good to go. I have either promotional material externally or edited content for the community where I want to focus on one specific topic and not the whole lecture. And as we do a lot of these events, as you can see, this is an incredible AI use case for us. And also here's one really important tip for whatever video you're uploading to it. Make sure it has high quality audio. If you're taking a meeting recording or something like that and the audio quality is mediocre, you can always run it through something like Adobe Podcast where it really ups the mediocre quality to studio-like recording. It's really magical and worth doing for a lot of recordings that are still so Audio really matters. I mean, imagine the entire video would be recorded like this, where I don't even speak into the mic. Ugh. Brother, ugh. You wouldn't want that, and neither does your audience. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's apply this to the talk in Madrid, and let me actually show you how we use this. So as you can see, what it does here, it creates a lot of clips, okay? And I actually like that. I'd rather have 20 clips where I get to keep three than the alternative of getting like six to seven clips where I keep one. So you can click any clip here to preview it like so. Well, you need to, first of all, figure out what is your task, how to describe that in words. Have a little profile like this, figure out the use cases for yourself. And the great thing here is you also get an editor where you get to adjust these to your own liking. So for example, in this one, I would want to trim away the first second where I say, well, well, you need to first of all, figure out what is your task. First of all, figure out what is your task, how to describe that in words. Perfect, and I'll make this small correction here, changing this to words, quick edit on the subtitles so it fits with our branding, 36 pixels, that's better. Maybe I'll take down the text outline with, and now it matches nicely with our existing content. With one click, I'll apply this across the entire project and there's not much more to show you in this. I mean, you could go in here and it creates auto captions and you could insert a title at the beginning. I really like this because some of these short form clips, they really need a little bit of context in the beginning. For example, this would be a great title to give it a little bit of context. One more tweak, apply this across the entire project. Doesn't need any cropping. I don't need a brand kit, you could use that. And we're good to go, I can export this. I could connect this to my Instagram and directly post it to it, or I'll just download this as one of my team members will make sure this goes up in a relevant time slot and he likes to write the captions. And then as I define my style for the entire project, I can just go to these other ones, have a quick look at it and export that too. You to actually do a little bit of self-exploration and find out what matters about yourself. So when you use this tech, you know how to communicate that. Ah, this is great. This is a really good point, but this one does lack a title, so I'll just quickly add it. All right, that's a very catchy title, but appropriate in this case, I would say. That is really it. That's how quickly this goes. And that's why I'm saying you could upload multiple meetings, multiple podcasts, multiple lectures you have, and then within minutes, you just look at a few of these clips, pick the ones you like, export them, or even better, you just directly upload them to your social media channels. And then instead of having to spend three to five hours with editing or something like this, it's gonna take you three to five minutes. Now, given that's not fully automated, but I really care with my content. I have very high quality standards, so I wouldn't just go with anything. I'm gonna take a close look. I'm gonna add a title. You don't have to do that for yourself. Again, it comes back to the point of how good the input material is. If every part of your lecture is super relevant and it hits various points, by the way, you can structure it in that way, right? If you do a 20 minute lecture where the beginning connects to the end, it's not gonna be as good for shorts as opposed to doing something where you do like a top 10 list of the best XYZ. There you're gonna find way more shorts and that would be kind of a hack on how to make the most out of this. And before we round this out, I just wanna point out some extra features here, which I really like. One of them is this favorites feature. Obviously, that's fantastic. When you go through these, I just use this star to pick the ones that I like. They will stick to the top, but then also it analyzes the entire transcript in there. So it looks at that and it compares it with Google Trends that are currently happening. So for example, I discovered that the content of this one could be trending right now. And maybe I should focus more on it. Also, it looks at search terms in there and how well this would perform. As you can see, these ones are high in search. And then up here, you get the keyword search volume that is related to your clips with top trending keywords. So you can just use them in your titles and get search traffic on your shorts. Matter of fact, if I look at some of the best performing shorts on the AI Advantage YouTube channel, you'll find that some of these just performed well over time because they rank in search. Look at this one. All the traffic comes from search. So in this case, I rank for the GPT-4 keywords here. But really the key to that is hitting a trend early with high quality content. And this allows you to do both. It allows you to identify what is trending related to the content you're working through here. So all in all, super simple tool that can add a lot of value to many organizations. I know that video production is a big struggle for many brands and individuals. It simply takes time and there's no real way around it. 
except for this. High quality input content, take a little bit of time in selecting what works, and then auto post it to your social channels. If you want to give it a shot, you can click the first link in the description. You can try out one project completely for free, no limitations. So you could do something like I did here and see if it works for you. Go give Munch a try today. And if you want to learn more about AI video, then I created this breakdown of Sora and what people missed about it. I think this is a really high quality video that got overlooked by the algorithm. If you care about video production, then this is kind of a must see. There's so much good info in there. I'll see you there and have fun munching.